Hi everyone, thank you for joining this new session of Supply Chain Leaders webinar series. Today, we have the chance to learn from the experience of Haribo, French leader within the non-chocolate and licorice sectors. Thank you to the speaker, Elsa Cross, who is SN, uh, demand manager at Haribo France. She is responsible for implementing demand management and sales forecast processes and deploying Future Master at Haribo. The presentation will last 30 minutes and will be followed by a 15 minutes Q&A session. So please do not hesitate to post your questions throughout the webinar in the Q&A session of your screen. And now I'm going to hand it over to Elsa to start the presentation. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm very pleased to be here with you today and uh, be able to share our experience with um, uh, the supply chain project we have uh, done with the master the past few years in Aribo, uh, France. The presentation will be divided into three parts. First, um, we will talk a little bit on about Aribo in itself and what's behind the brand. Then I will quickly explain how our supply chain is uh, structured uh, in Aribo France. And uh, finally, um, I will go a little bit into details on how we have actually transformed it. So Aribo, who are we? Uh, in fact, it's a story that started uh, back in the um, 1920, at the beginning of a century, with uh, a couple, Hans and uh, Gertrude uh, Riegel, who has started um, the candy uh, shop in uh, Germany, in Bonn. And actually, it's a name that really makes sense for us. Um, maybe you're not aware of it, but Aribo stands for Hans Riegel Bonn. And um, it is a very important uh, for us that it's a, a family business. We're still a family business and uh, still located in Bonn today. Uh, from that uh, candy shop, um, Aribo had become a, a world leader with more than 6,000 employees and um, 19 production sites. Sorry, and sorry, uh, export yes, I just to uh, stop you. We have a little technical problem. Okay. Ah, yes, it's working. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Start again. Um, so from that um, little uh, candy shop in Germany, Aribo has become uh, a world leader today in the, uh, in the, um, in the world. We have uh, more than 6,000 employees working for Aribo, uh, 19 production sites and exportation in more than uh, 100 countries. And um, that success is also uh, very important in France as Aribo France is the second group subsidiaries with um, 750 people working here, two production sites in the south of France, one in Marseille and one in Uzès. Uh, we are producing every year around 51,000 tons of, uh, of sweets. Aribo is uh, really for us um, a, a very powerful brand. It's a good asset that, for instance, um, when we ask um, people, 87% um, of them spontaneously mention Aribo as um, a really a, a brand reference in the candy world. So um, we can see that now uh, around 14 million consumers and families are already consuming and attracted by our product. But behind that Aribo brands, uh, the growth is actually based on different pillars. And the first, um, first is, of course, our famous Tagada, who is actually celebrating his uh, her um, 50th anniversary this year. And then we have we. Um, the colorful Dragibus, Dragibus Soft, Dragibus Original, and um, uh, Sour Dragibus as well. And we have a new uh, family, which is called uh, Aribo Sour Product, Aribo Peak. And finally, our traditional Shamalo, who has seen uh, a little brother, brother coming in last year with a chocolate Shamalo. Usually, I, I often have a question, do you have a, a, a big seasonality in the, in the, in the candy uh, world? And in fact, yes, we do. It's mainly driven by our promotional campaign. And we can see that we have two big peaks uh, during the year. Of course, Halloween is the biggest and the most important period for us 
um, followed by uh, Carnival uh, at the beginning of the year and Kermes, who is actually taking place uh, in June when, um, uh, when school is actually finishing. One important thing to uh, state is that today uh, the environment has uh, changed um, quite, uh, quite a lot because we can see that the, the candy market is really disturbed uh, since 18 months. And it's true that after 10 years of growth, um, the market is now experiencing uh, a decline. Uh, however, Aribo remains uh, the only player growing in that new environment. When the market is minus 3%, we remain positive with uh, plus 1.3%. That figures is uh, from uh, end of October last year. So in that environment, Aribo still leads the category uh, with a market share of 38.9%, uh, which is 1.7% more than uh, in 2017. And we can see that it's uh, uh, almost the only player being positive uh, this year together with uh, Solinest. So we could think, we could ask ourselves how uh, Aribo is actually uh, remaining positive in that um, market. And one of the key drivers for us is clearly the innovation. If we are looking at the top 20 most generating innovation in terms of turnover, we can see that il uh, il out of the 20, 11 are coming from Aribo. And the first one last year was, uh, as I mentioned before, the Chamado Choco, um, which was really a big hit for us, followed by um, Star Mix, which is a, a, a mixed bag, and uh, some product from our two um, family, Mawam Strikes, Mawam Mix, and Happy Fruities. So it's a new uh, brand that we have launched two years ago. Now, um, going uh, a little bit into the details of, uh, of our supply chain in France. Um, a few key figures to explain how we are structured. If, uh, in 2017, we have shipped more than uh, 75,000 tons of product in France and uh, in uh, export. We work with um, more than 700 uh, SKU candy SKU, but also some derived products, around 200. We manage almost 200,000 pallets in our network. Uh, we have 2,700 shuttles between our two sites, one in Marseille and one in Uzès. And we also export uh, from Le Havre and Foss-sur-Mer uh, to uh, our export countries. Our main flows are, um, are from uh, our factories and inbound flows from uh, Europe, from Belgium, from Spain, from Germany, from Austria, from Hungary, but also outbound flows. Um, so we, we do ship some product to Belgium, to Italy and Spain. In the supply chain, our main drivers are clearly uh, our consumer satisfaction and um, of course compliance with ethics and good practice. And as we are a rather new team in uh, the available world, we uh, really tend to stay proactive and uh, always um, uh, trying to find some room for improvement. So, um, when we talk about supply chain uh, in Aribo, um, we, we have to remember that we, are, we have undergone a clear transformation the past six years, and um, we have made some uh, big structural changes. We used to, uh, to work in um, an environment when we where we had no connections between our different tools and information system. We had lots of uh, manual entries. And of course, when we have manual entries, you have lots of uh, manual data updates, of course. We did spend a lot of time on data crunching rather than analyzing. And we have an unregular SNOP cycle because of um, uh, the time we, we used to spend on data, uh, we do not uh, have enough time to have a monthly SNP cycle. So today we are in a much better situation where um, we have a good uh, tool integration and daily data updates like sales history, stocks, production. Um, 
and we are now uh, able to make some scenario and projection for our quicker decision making and we have a much more uh, collaborative forecast validation process. So this one figure culture uh, really uh, reinforces our SNO pre process, which is much more robust now. When we talk about transformation, um, for us, if we have to summarize it, we have uh, different pillars. The first one is clearly strategy. We have to know, uh, we wanted to know exactly um, where we want to be uh, in, the, in the few years uh, in terms of supply chain. We had to put in place some pr new processes and of course a new organization, new team. Um, and that's where Future Master com came with a technology because uh, we have a team, we have the organization and the processes, but we needed to, to have a robust tool to support that new processes. And that's um, the technology of Future Master, which uh, was uh, chosen because it did really fit our needs. And in, um, in transverse, we have, of course, uh, the people is uh, uh, one of the main pillars in any transformation. So looking at demand planning, uh, we, we had no choice than uh, starting to really work deeply into uh, our demand, um, especially in a very uh, growing or disturbed uh, market. Um, we, we have a customer portfolio which actually was get, uh, getting more complex. We have different distribution channels, different and many different customers with different supply chain approaches. For some of them, we have a make to stock approach. For others, we have a make to stock. So we basically produce based on customer orders. And of course, our customers also um, are changing their logistic organization that, and that uh, have a, a, a big impact on our stock level target and, target and uh, our demand. Also, um, our product portfolio um, became more complex even though uh, we tend to stay stable in terms of number of SKU, uh, we had uh, to be able to respond to a, to a market um, a new environment. We had to respond with uh, uh, renewing our portfolio every year. So it's um, proposing new, uh, new product via innovation, also no pro new promotions, and uh, the amount of launches and promotion was um, getting more important so uh, and together with that innovation you have necessity to uh, uh, properly phase in and phase out the product into your portfolio that's where supply chain is really heavily impacted um, the market as i mentioned before is is getting more complex after uh, many years of growth we are now in a, in a more disturbed market where uh, we have to be much more agile and be able to respond very quickly uh, to uh, uh, the consumer uh, new behaviors but also our competitors new new behaviors um, our supply chain was um, getting more complex we had an increase of our multi-sourcing and uh, of course associated lead time. So we had to import more product from our colleague in Europe and uh, uh, that uh, has an impact on our stock level and lead times. Okay, um, so the real, uh, the most important need for us was really to um, minimize our short-term adjustment and more focusing on mid-term planning so that we can smooth our production planning and uh, uh, remain stable in terms of uh, stock level. So why do we need a forecast? Forecast and demand planning is clearly the key entrance to uh, the SNOP process and production planning. So it helps to define the inventory level uh, per product and uh, it's uh, feeding the production planning in order to satisfy the demand and have an excellent customer service level. Um, and of course, uh, respect the, and comply with the production optimization and start targets. When we have, um, as you can see in the graph below, when we have uh, lots of volatility in, in sales, uh, we have a very linear weekly production and that's where stock is um, having a very important role. 
So what are our objective in terms of demand planning? Um, it's um, of course to balance the demand and the supply on a mid and long-term basis so that we can improve our customer service and avoid any shortages. We want to optimize our inventory level and decrease of course penalties amount. And we also want to stabilize our production plan. We don't, we, 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 we really want to avoid uh, last minute changes. Uh, we want to create and um, uh, a consolidated and uh, viable operating plan for the organization. We want to be able to anticipate any potential uh, supply or production issue and uh, any issue with our stock level for, with promotion or innovation. Um, and the ultimate benefit is really to integrate our strategic business and financial plan with our operational plan. We want to be able to track uh, uh, the adherence with our budget and um, be uh, able to have a global volume approach. So having a good demand planning will help us to track and control our performance. So um, here you can see the, the new forecast validation process. Um, thanks to Future Master, we are now not starting anymore every month from a blank paper, but uh, we have a baseline forecast calculated uh, with a statistical forecast model. And then we have um, every month our demand review with sales and marketing um, team. Uh, where we actually uh, integrate all the uh, market, inform market information like um, any information that can have an impact on our demand and forecast. So on top of the baseline, we actually um, integrate uh, like the impact on, of a TV campaign, of a promo cannibalization or any price increase, anything that can have um, uh, an impact in terms of volume. At the end of a demand review, we have a proper sign off from both teams and uh, we can then uh, have a consensus forecast meeting with uh, the steering committee uh, to have a final validation. And after that, we can really release uh, the demand plan, the unconstrained demand plan to the production planning. Here um, I try to uh, go a little bit more into details in terms of output and input of uh, demand planning as we can see that it's really a cross-functional process. In terms of input from the marketing we have information on uh, the new products uh, that are coming in, any prom promotions and advertising any information on competition, cannibalization. And from the sales, I have uh, more customer oriented information like uh, a listing, the listing uh, of product, um, a new or losses of customers, uh, also information on the competition, on uh, new product in introduction, of course, pricing, promotion, and also something really important for us is the customer ordering uh, behavior. And from that, uh, we could uh, really validate our demand plan, which is always realistic. It's reviewed frequently. It does represent the total demand and is reason. From that demand plan, we have outputs, uh, which are production plan, uh, that's the first output, proc procurement plan. Um, the demand plan really helps to uh, by the good amount of labels, of foils, of raw materials. And it also it helps to have um, a st and stabilize the uh, intercompany plan. So what we actually importing from our colleague in Europe and of course our co-packing plan for our, prom our promotion. And finally uh, be able to have a logistic plan and have um, the good organization uh, uh, behind. So as demand planning is the key entrance for SNOP process, um, it, is, it is really important to um, state that uh, our SNOP, SNOP process is much more robust that, than it used to be in the past. And um, we are organized in a um, monthly cycle. Every month we have um, 
the same agenda. The first week of the month is dedicated to innovation review together with sales and uh, marketing. We are focusing on the level of distribution, the rotation of each product so that we can have a very uh, detailed and um, uh, uh, volume per innovation. And then after that validation, we uh, usually have the second week of the month, our proper demand review, where we uh, spend time on promotion and baseline product. Um, at the end of the second week, we have then a validation of our innovation, baseline and promotional volumes, which is released to the supply planning. We have a supply planning review uh, on the third week of the month, where we can uh, identify any constraints uh, between demand and offer. And we try to, of course, find um, corrective action. And at the end of the month, we, uh, we now have our SNP executive meeting with the steering committee of the company, where we actually present um, results in va volume and value and um, we escalate also all the decision we have to take. So how can we see that um, Future Master did uh, really help us? Um, so first uh, we can look at the forecast accuracy, that's quantitative indica indicators. And uh, we have started to uh, work on Excel in 2015. And of course, measuring our forecast accuracy at that time on our baseline product, we were around 60% when we started to implement the demand plan. And then the next year in 2016, we, um, we increased by 10% and we, are, we were around 70% uh, of forecast accuracy. Um, after go live of Future Master in 2017, middle uh, August, um, we have uh, came to uh, the end of 2018 to 80% of forecast accuracy. So it's an increase by 10% between uh, the moment we have implemented Future Master and, uh, and today. So for us, it's really uh, a clear indication that um, the quality of our forecast is much better and um, we can also see uh, an impact on our um, stocks and the quality of our stock. Um, in one year, we have uh, decreased by 5% the level of our obsolete stock. Also, one of the most important uh, KPI for us is clearly our customer service level. And in one year, we have uh, increased by 1%, which is quite an achievement for us. We have much uh, less shortages, better stock uh, quality, and uh, I think it does increase our customer satisfaction in, at the end. Something that is not... Um, in terms of KPI, but is also very important for us, is the improvement of our process in itself. We are much more um, uh, reactive on a daily business operation. We have put in place an alert management if uh, sales are above or below the forecast, so that we can quickly adjust, anticipate issues, and really prioritize. Uh, w this is something is which is quite um, new for us because we used to to only react uh, with a lead time of uh, three to four, four weeks. So we have now direct corrective actions on production planning, plants and co-packing. And of course, we do spend much more time on added value operation now rather than uh, time, uh, spending time on data crunching. Uh, we spend more time with the sales and marketing team and uh, we, re we, we reduce uh, in a, a lot of uh, change on, on, on the, the planning uh, below um, four uh, weeks. 
and uh, we are also supporting the medium decision making process by our SNP. We now have uh, a monthly review of our forecast. We have a better anticipation of the demand seasonality and any volatility. We can now see uh, trends uh, uh, on the market and on the product. We can better analyze the seasonality of product family. And, um, we have more frequent assessment of our need against production capacity for quicker operation. Um, and we can, of course, work on different scenario on uh, forecast evolution, especially uh, nowadays with uh, a disturbed market. Uh, we have to be able to quickly evaluate um, changes on our demand. And of course, uh, it has a huge impact on the different organization, logistics, production, uh, transfers, et cetera. In terms of key success factor, uh, I only uh, put two, which is uh, for me very important. The first one is the top management support. Uh, in any change management uh, project, uh, it is very important to have uh, of, um, our steering committee support so that um, the communication is, is facilitated with the rest of the company. And um, another point which is very important is uh, to allocate enough resources on these types of product. Um, and of course, do not ma minimize the last stage of uh, the project, which is actually testing. And uh, it is time consuming, but this this is very important to, to do well because otherwise you go live with um, a, a system which is not fitting your needs and it takes months to uh, correct afterwards. Okay, thank you uh, Elsa for your very interesting presentation. Uh, we received many questions from the attendees. Um, uh, we are going to try to respond to as many as possible during this uh, 15 minutes Q&A. Uh, the first question we received is, why was it critical for Haribo to improve the forecast accuracy, stock and service level? Yes, in fact, we had come to a point where our portfolio and uh, supply chain were getting more and more complex, especially with the increase of uh, multi-sourcing flows. And we, we really could not handle our supply chain the way we used to do for the past decades. We had to change the way we worked and uh, have strong um, uh, SNP process, deep analysis of the demand, production planning and stock level. Um, we did test uh, a lot of different approach and we have decided to run the stat oh, forecast. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I was muted. Um, okay. Does your same team forecast um, at a per customer level, per product, or only at a national level per product? Usually I have inputs from um, the sales team at customer level, of course, but um, in Future Master, we did test uh, different approaches and we have decided to run the, the stat forecast model at SKU and distribution channel. It enables us to have the best forecast quality as baseline and the, the system identify trends and seasonality. Then we manually integrate market information such, such as listing or delisting TV, the impact of a TV campaign. And we can, of course, make corrections on the forecasts at SKU and customer level if it's needed. Great, thank you. Um, is the data on seasonality based or selling, primary sales or sell out? Okay, at the moment, we uh, only run the stat uh, forecast model on selling data, so uh, our internal sales from Aribo to our customer. And one of my um, goal is that uh, in the future uh, I would like to better integrate our sellout data uh, 
um, because I think uh, we have a lot of information available here. Um, most of our business is done with uh, hyper and supermarket. And um, if we could have a good uh, correlation between our selling and sell out data, we, I think we would be able to better and quicker react on demand changes, especially track um, uh, product launches, for instance. Okay, thank you. Um, after the implementation of Future Master, how fast did you see an improvement in your KPIs in terms of forecast accuracy, stock, and service level? Well, I think. Um, the benefits are not seeable from a day to another one. And uh, sometimes it's hard to uh, manage the expectation of uh, the rest of a company because um, they have um, put lots of efforts and people on this product. But uh, the first, uh, the first uh, benefit is on the, um, the way that it was very get, uh, being more simple to work with uh, data. Uh, so that was the first benefit. And then we had to wait for a few months, I would say between three and four cycle before we could see a clear improvement in our forecast accuracy and uh, service level. Okay, thank you. Um, how do you manage the forecast? Is it by product segmentation or by class of trade? Um, is by product segmentation and uh, distribution channel. Every month we make some forecast correction and we work by exception using the ABC class and XYZ. Okay, thank you. Um, which department at Aribo is responsible of the sales forecast accuracy? Is it in the sales and marketing scope or is it in the supply chain scope? Um, in Aribo, the demand planning team is part of the supply chain department and it's, um, the team is also in charge of the uh, activity management and by activity management, I mean the operational execution of our promotion and new product introduction. So to me, in my opinion, it really does make sense uh, to be part of a supply chain um, as uh, the demand planning team is really the middleman between sales and marketing and production. And the team is in a good position to bring people from different departments around the table and, um, and make them work together. Okay. Um, how do you manage to commit the sales and marketing teams? In fact, it's really important to commit them uh, to respect this sales forecast. <laughs> um, it's a good point. Um, I think as soon as we have started to have good results uh, with, uh, with Future Master in terms of uh, product availability and customer service level, um, the sales and marketing team could really evaluate the benefit of working uh, in, a, in a more collaborative way. And they started to have faith in the process and um, uh, we could prove that it brings value to the business and uh, support um, our top line objectives. And strategy, of course. Okay. So, why did you choose Future Master? Um, at the beginning of a project, we all came with our own previous experience in different companies. Some of us used to work with SAP, others with Future Master, and uh, we first uh, took a long time to analyze our need and make sure that um, uh, we cover them all before starting the tender. And after uh, a really deep analysis of our specification against the different APS offers on the market, um, we decided to go with Future Master as it did meet 100% uh, of our needs and we appreciate uh, its flexibility. In, um, in addition, Future Master had a strong experience with food industry, which was really important for us. Okay. Uh, and how was the collaboration with the Future Master teams before and during the project? For us, a strong collaboration with the team was essential and um, we had to be, uh, to be sure that 100% of our needs were fully understood and that was the case. It was also important for, uh, to have them during the process design phase as they came with um, a long expertise of um, and good advice on how on how to change and improve things uh, in Aribo. 
Okay. Uh, and if you had just one, but your main challenge during this project, what would it be? One, <laughs> um, I think uh, it was um, sum up at the end of the presentation. I think we should not minimize the, the, the time that resources need to spend on the project and also um, put enough uh, effort on the change management. You could have all the best and integrated system in place. If the change has not been correctly communicated and explained, uh, people need to be trained. Um, there is always a risk of uh, people res resisting to it. So change management is uh, clearly um, very important. Okay, thank you. Um, you told us that uh, your advanced planning solution enables fast decision making process and we wanted to know at which company level is it used? Well, locally, we have a future master in France and clearly it, um, it is used on a daily business operation with uh, production planning um, to manage our shortage uh, situation, for instance, and uh, uh, allocation volume per customer. And um, we also have frequent assessment of our needs uh, in terms of production capacity. Okay. Uh, and to support all this process, how many people are you, do you have in the demand planning team and in the supply planning team? In the supply planning team, we have one production scheduler and one production planning. In the demand planning team, we have one person uh, dedicated to promotion, one person dedicated to innovation, and another person um, dedicated to the baseline product and myself. Great. Um, uh, okay, so I have another question. Uh, hello, could you elaborate further on what technique you use to measure forecast accuracy? Uh, the KPI is uh, the traditional one. We basically compare sales against forecasts uh, in um, absolute value, and then we divide it by the sales, and we do that at SKU level. Okay. Um, uh, does the scheduler is using for Future Master or ERP or Excel? It's a homemade uh, <laughs> production planning system. Okay. But it's, but it's, uh, it's of course linked with uh, Future Master. Okay. Um, how challenging was it for you to start the SNOP meeting? Well, uh, first you have to explain what is the SNOP process and it actually takes time. Uh, um, even if uh, most of the people are coming from a different company and they were of course used to, uh, to this kind of processes, um, you have to change a little bit the way people used to work and uh, coming from a situation where people were working more into silos, uh, we are now in, situ in a situation where we have um, a one-figure culture and uh, uh, the circulation of the data information. And people are actually sitting at the table uh, every month together and they are now used to it. So um, I think it's, it's a little bit of uh, discipline and uh, education, I would say. To, to the different departments. Okay. Uh, another question, uh, what types of data is the forecast based on? Uh, we run the forecast based on the sales history and it's uh, our shipped volume. Okay. Um, okay, and uh, we will... Uh, uh, just perhaps two questions and we will close this webinar. Uh, on what's next? What will be your next challenges you want to address at Aribo France in the supply chain department? Well, we have uh, lots of challenges in front of us, but um, in terms of demand planning, uh, we have uh, with the future master ended the stabilization phase 
and we can start now thinking of our next steps. I think that we really would like to work, uh, to better work with our sell out data. And today, um, as I said, the biggest part of our business is, is made with hyper and supermarket and uh, uh, definitely the, the final consumption and the, any variation could help us to bring our forecast accuracy uh, one step forward. Okay. Uh, after doing this um, this project, for you, what was essential to change in your daily business? I can repeat the question. Uh, what is essential change with a daily business? What has changed, yeah. I mean, in our daily? Um, we just don't work uh, the same way uh, we used to do. We have now uh, a kind of routine in place. Um, every day we check our stocks and we check the alerts and um, we could uh, track the demand against uh, the supply on a weekly basis and uh, for promotion on a daily basis. Uh, it's just uh, a different world. We used to, uh, to spend so much time on like half of a day uh, gathering the data and then the end of <laughs> the remaining two hours to analyze it. And today it's complete, the, the complete contrary. We, everything is updated when we arrive in the morning and uh, we can um, uh, quickly uh, react to, uh, to the new uh, figures. And we can, of course, uh, stop uh, working uh, as a fireman, but spend more time on the mid and long term uh, analysis, which is really a, 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 that was the ultimate benefit for us. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, and about um, the new uh, supply chain technology like machine learning, for example, uh, Will you be interesting in develop uh, developing this kind of te techniques in your supply chain? Yes, I think I'm open to uh, any new uh, improvement. Uh, we are now in a phase where we we are used to uh, the new system, the new APS, and uh, uh, the next challenge uh, could be around. Uh, a new technology and a new demand sensing, but um, yeah, it's a it's a new reflection we need to to have in uh, in the team, and um, of course we we still want to uh, to improve our forecast accuracy and have a, a operational excellence. Okay, well, uh, thank you all for joining uh, this um, uh, webinar today. Thank you, Elsa, for your very interesting presentation. It was great. Thank you. Uh, we are much, very much interested in having your feedback on this webinar. So please take a couple of minutes to fill in the evaluation survey at the end of this webinar. You will also receive it by email this afternoon. The replay of the webinar will also be communicated to you soon. Last but not least, our next Supply Chain Leaders webinar will take place on the 18th of February and will be presented by Makeup Forever, a division of LVMH Group. We will have the chance to learn from the experience of a demand planner and from the other side, a supply planner. So it will be really interesting. Thank you again to everyone for joining today. We wish you a very good day or evening. Thank you. Have a good day.